Good afternoon. Welcome to Don't Ask That Question. I'm Kelly O'Mara, and this week I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to discuss the effect of COVID on religion during the last two years under COVID. The episode we're going to focus on today is a church in California that basically said no to lockdowns and remained open, despite tremendous amount of pressure being put on churches in California to shut down. This church not only survived the storm, but thrived. I'm very pleased to welcome parishioners Mike Altabelli and Ken Vizi of the 412 Church, Mariana, California. They are going to share a bit about the kind of faith that they have that withstands great governmental forces. So welcome to Don't Ask That Question, Mike and Ken. It's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I guess let's just jump right in. Uh, first, I guess, Mike, I'll start with you. You know, it'd be helpful if you talk a little bit about your church, uh, the congregation. Uh, can you give me a little information about the size, age of parishioners, kind of community you're in? I, I guess a, a big city where you're located near. Sure. Uh, we are located in Riverside, California. So it's between San Diego, Orange County okay. uh, uh, area. So um you know, it's it's a good size uh, um, area in Southern California. Mm -hmm. We're in a small small town called Marietta, California. Uh, relatively an up and growing uh, uh, community uh, over the past twenty years has grown quite tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the churches, uh, the church right now is around twelve to fourteen hundred people. Uh, on a given Sunday, uh, given week, uh, we do have an online church uh, that that is nationwide and worldwide. I mean, there are people are are logging in, you know, across the country uh, on Facebook, uh, mm -hmm. or or YouTube uh, on, on a Sunday service. Um, so, um, you know, it, it 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 as people move move out of California, they continue to to to. To, to follow follow, uh, follow uh, Pastor Tim at 412. Uh, and it's, uh, like I said, it's a growing church. Uh, when we came to the church, my wife and I, we uh, again were um, shut down by the, the, the COVID. Uh, you know, we all, we all, you know, uh, got the, the 15 days to slow the spread. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our, our, the church that we were going to shut down and uh, did not open after the two weeks. Uh, we were online, you know, just like anything, anybody else. And, you know, sat at home on Sunday morning and watched the pastor talk and, um, you know, dozed off. And, uh, you know, uh, because you're just laying on the couch. Uh, so... My wife and I decided to take a look around and see what was out there. Um, she ran across a Facebook uh, page that said uh, 412 Marietta was open. And uh, we decided to go one Sunday and never left. Wow. Okay. How about you, Ken? Um, well, it's kind of the same story. We um, were at a church that did shut down. And, um, and then even after they opened, it was a long time. And even after they opened, they wanted to wear masks and, you know, all the social distancing and all that stuff. And it was a small church. And we went over and checked out the only church that was open and found out that the pastor there, uh, Tim Thompson, was not the kind of guy that's going to bow down to governmental, you know, all the stuff that they were putting on us. And uh, that's what we liked about it hmm. because... Um, I've, I've always been that way. I'm not, not going to bow down to things that are contrary to worship and, and the freedom of religion and to honor God and respect God. And so we went, uh, I think it was like maybe two weeks into COVID hmm. and we never left because we liked and enjoyed the freedom that was there. Wow. Okay. And, and so for me and my daughter, um, we, we, plugged right in it seemed to be the perfect fit we didn't know how long we would be there but once we experienced the freedom and we saw what was going on in the rest of the churches we never left wow. and so we're very involved there now and we support 
the pastor 100 um, percent he is he is an animal when it comes to going after these uh you know deep state globalists that want to pretty much destroy our country and so even though i'm nowhere near the kind of animal he is on the political stuff i'm i'm there supporting and making sure that he has all the help and all the support he needs to uh, carry on the battle. Okay, cool. So look, uh, let's let's get into a little bit of uh, the obvious argument for shutting down uh, houses of worship. Uh, you know, is the First Amendment. Uh, I found it interesting that other activities like uh, gambling, uh, for instance, were exempted from the in-person gathering of groups of more than ten, while churches were held to you know, very strict rules about gathering and, you know, no more than 10 and adhering to social distancing rules, wearing masks. Um, the disparity in the rules, um, did that have any effect on the church's decision to stay open? Well, I'm, you know, I wasn't part of that decision to stay open, but I'm sure it did. And um, when we uh, saw what was going on and how they were targeting the church, obviously you start to realize that it's more than just a political battle, that it's a, it's a spiritual battle also. And so I think that became more obvious to see as time went on, uh, you know, the spiritual battle was just getting more intense and more intense and guys like, like pastor Tim and the staff there at 412 church are on the front line. And they're not only fighting the physical, physical aspect of it, but, you know, at being a church, uh, very involved in the spiritual side of it also. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that, uh, like, like you said, yes, it, it did. Uh, it, it did fall into the, the realm of um, wanting to shut down and keeping uh, 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 the churches closed because of fear on a lot of the pastors and uh, uh, people in the churches. Um, it, like you said, you know, Gambling places were able to, to stay open. Big box stores were able to stay open. You were able to go out and loot with tens of thousands of people, um, you know, in close quarters and not uh, not have any ramifications against it. But uh, to attack the church, I think it was just a control thing to keep the um, the Christian churches and and, and synagogues and I, even if you want to go to mosques and and and, and broaden the horizon or out there to keep every everyone. Um, separated, and if you keep people separated, they're gonna they're gonna have fear uh, um, mm -hmm. because they have no support around them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people thought it was a control issue, uh, if not at the very beginning, definitely well within it. Um, you know, in California, I think they even banned uh, singing in places of worship. Yet, you know, <laughs> thousands of people could go out and protest, and you know, yeah. it just seemed like a total blatant hit on religious freedom. Exactly. And that and that 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 was the big thing. And I know that, you know, quite a few churches in Southern California um, and, and Northern California uh, were fined heavily on a weekly basis uh, in the millions of dollars uh, uh, for shutting for, for staying open. Huh. We're going to get into that. Um, so I think, you know, uh, the virus itself doesn't discriminate between religious and non-religious gatherings. I mean, that's just the fact. And I mean, you know, the First Amendment specifically gives preferential treatment to the exercise of, or free exercise of religion, right? So right. despite these obvious points, um, why do you think so many churches did adhere to the lockdowns? I'll take that, Ken, or... Um, I, I would just say it, it's just plain fear. Uh, they're just afraid. Um, they're, there's a lot of churches that are just lukewarm and self-centered and man-centered. And I think with that comes a lot of, a, a lot of fear, lack of trust in God. And uh, I think they just bow down and give in uh, because they're afraid. What, afraid of what? Afraid of the government? Afraid of afraid of the governmental system and the fines that could be put on them and and the pressure and the you know the negative publicity that 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 they might get from it 
and the, the, the fear of losing certain people for not uh, doing what the government says, and, and, and you know, that aspect of it. And so I think there was a lot of that, a lot of compromise, and um, that's just something you see um, generally in the American church these days. Hmm. You know, and, and, and I think the fear factor was, was the big thing. Um, you know, God did not give us a spirit of fear, uh, but a power and a sound mind. Uh, and, and you can see we have, we have common sense. And, and that was one thing that Pastor Tim says, we have CS, common sense. <laughs> and, you can, uh, and, and, and you could see the people that, that didn't fear like I, like I said before, we had a, we had a church that, that grew. I mean, when we came, there was like maybe 150 to 200 people and it grew up to 12, 11, 12, you know, uh, 100, 1300 people throughout this whole COVID thing where we went from two services to four services, no masks. Um, you know, it, there was a couple of people that came in with the masks, but eventually they stopped coming with the masks and, uh, and uh, it's, it's uh, you know, they, they, when, when you saw that there's no fear, we didn't sit, you know, every seat was filled. Uh, we had to even uh, put 60 chairs in the overflow. And now we even have a tent outside with chairs in it because it's so big. We went wow. from two, wow. two services to four. So you're saying that people were, or the churches were more afraid of the government than they were of the COVID. I think I think both. Seriously, I think both. I think the I I believe that the, uh, the, the 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 pastoral staffs were more afraid of the government, especially if they took any PPP money. Uh, uh, but I think they were afraid of the government shutting down because they heard in fines and everything else because they heard of the ones that were not shutting down were starting to get fines, you know. There, uh, uh, police were coming to the doors on Sunday, um, uh, uh, you know, in, in different counties, not in Riverside, because we have a, a fantastic sheriff and a fantastic um, uh, district attorney. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into those in uh, in just a second. Um, I'm uh, I'm just interested that uh, I I have a list here of the number of, of churches that actually closed their doors. Uh, in California, and it's it's amazing how many did, and I'm I'm just thinking, well, you know, where does the separation begin and end? You know, I mean, who do you answer to at the end of the day, right? Answer to God. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so let's uh, move on. Um, so I know that a lot of uh, churches uh, and religious uh, organizations took uh, the PPP money. Um, uh, the government paid them basically to stay closed. Um, in a way, I'm wondering, do you all think that they sort of sold their souls uh, uh, to the devil when they took this money? Um, what it means is, you know, can they be taken seriously? Can these churches or these, you know, houses of worship uh, be taken seriously um, if down the road we have to face this again, uh, you know, an, a lockdown for whatever reason they, you know, they could throw at us. Um, will their parishioners at this point, you know, stay with them? I, I, I think they would do exactly the same thing as what they did. They would, they would shut down. They would shut down and watch on TV. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think, I, again, I, even talking to people that I know that are still going to different churches that, you know, that shut down. Some of them still don't want to go to church. They still are in fear of catching COVID. Really? And you know, what? All, what's also interesting is when those churches did open back up, people just flocked right back to them. And it's almost like, you know, the ones that didn't completely close up. It's almost like um, they're okay with that compromise. They're okay because they kind of, some of them see it under the banner of uh, protection, you know, and maybe that's true for the first two weeks when we really didn't know the severity of the mm -hmm. virus. And, uh, you know, we had to like wait to see 
we don't want a bunch of elderly people um, falling over in the pews and dying in the church and be responsible for that. So I believe there's a legit, there was initially a legit, um, maybe restraint, hold back a little bit until we see what's going on, where this is going. But, but after a while, you know, it, it's, it became obvious, but even though it's obvious is more than ever right now, it's obvious and people, uh, are still afraid to go back to some of the churches. And at the same time, the people that, um, you know, left those churches, they, they liked it. It almost, it was almost like a vacation from church, I think and where they can stay home and watch it in the luxury of their home if they even did that. So there, there's a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of compromise, a lot of, on top of all the fear. And uh, You know, that's an interesting question. Uh, so do you think you lose re religiousness, if, if there's such a religiousness, uh, if you're not sitting in a, in a chair, in, in a building, in the church? You know, I mean, I, I'm a Catholic. Um, and I'm, I'm probably a lesser Catholic than, than most Catholics. Um, I try to hit the high holy days. Um, but I mean, I don't know. Am I, am I less in my faith if I'm watching it from home? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, I'm throwing it out there. I, I don't, I don't think it's, 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 it's a, it's a question of being less or more. Uh, the Bible says that do not forsake the assembly together of the saints. Okay. So iron sharpens iron, the word of God says. So when you're with your brother or sister in Christ, when you're together, when you're studying the word, when you're fellowshipping, it makes you stronger. When you're separated, it makes you weaker. You see, because when, when you have accountability, uh, there's, 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 there's strength in that accountability. There's strength in numbers. Okay. Well, there's strength in community too, right? There's strength in community too, right? So that's I mean, basically strength in numbers is what I'm saying. Right. So if you're sitting, you, you, know, there, there, you, you can't be a lone Christian, okay? Because there's too much other things that could distract you. Uh, before, let me just tell you this, before the COVID, mm -hmm. I was, I mean, we, were, we, we went to church every Sunday, uh, um, Wednesday night, uh, uh, now and then, maybe a Bible study. Uh, my wife and I pray together. We, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, we fellowship with with some believers, you know, and and it, and it just it it was just like that. But with the with the COVID shutdown, mm -hmm. and we came to four twelve. Let me tell you this. I'm at church on Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, sometimes Monday night. We have Bible studies. We, we are so busy now because of what God has brought to us. We fellowship with other believers. We go out to lunch, we go out to dinner. There's, and they're, they're, like I said, strength in numbers. We have no fear. We don't even talk about the COVID stuff anymore. Okay, we talk about the Lord's stuff. Did you at the beginning when this first happened? Did you all talk about COVID a lot? Well, of course, because nobody knew what was going on. You know, all, all we all we heard and all we saw was people dying. Uh, you know, uh, and like I said, the first two weeks, okay, fine. But then we started seeing, well, we're not, you know, we're not getting sick. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, we saw the 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 elites doing their thing mm -hmm. uh we saw people like you said going to uh you know big box stores you have you know they can still gamble uh they can still you know so right. we can go you know uh there there was a lot of things that were out there so we started thinking okay well wait we can go to the grocery store not fear we didn't wear masks when we went out to the grocery stores to to, to we didn't wear masks out anywhere uh in in california or it's where we were at in marietta uh -huh. we didn't fear it and it wasn't one of the regulations in california i mean i live in nevada well, it was a we had to wear face masks everywhere it was a regulation in california but not implemented in riverside county oh okay okay so what you're saying is basically you you had the ability to remain within your community of 
friends, community, that, that gives you strength. Is that true? Exactly. That's it's true. And Mike, and Mike made a good point. Um, you know, we, we sat there for almost a year in, in the congregation, right next to each other, you know, hugging one another, shaking hands, looking at, looking at the smile of our brothers and sisters. And, and I, I can tell you for the first year, I didn't know one single person that got COVID. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't any, but I didn't know any. And it wasn't something that was spreading rapidly through the church because we were congregating together. And so that became pretty easy to see. And um, I don't know if it's because God was protecting us from getting it or the thing wasn't as contagious as they had said or uh, definitely not as dangerous as they made it out to be. And so for us, it was just like a no brainer. You know, we, we didn't, we weren't willing to give up our freedom of worship and fellowship and seeing the, the happy faces, the smiles on people's faces. And then if someone was hurting, we could see the pain, you know, and we could pray for them and we can surround them with brothers and sisters and we can, we can love them in Christ. And uh, which is so much more than a phone call or mm -hmm. doing something online that's not personal. So right. we, we loved it because we were able to remain uh, personal and, and to be uh, gathering together, which is an act of obedience, like Mike said, to uh, the word of God. And well, so you, would think, you would think in a time like, like COVID, the time of COVID, um, you know, BC, before COVID and AC, um, <laughs> that uh, you would need your friends, your family, your, you know, fellow parishioners to be there with you going through, you know, everything you're feeling. I mean, whether you believe what co what they said about COVID, whether you don't, it's being thrown at you every single minute on every single channel, on every single news outlet that, you know, you're going to die, right? So I can see where people would need somewhere to go um, for that human connection, right? And where better than to, you know, the house that you worship in? I mean, I think that makes perfect sense, right? Most definitely, and 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 also family. I mean, my family. Uh, I have I have uh, three kids, uh, five granddaughters. Uh, we never stop seeing each other. Okay. Oh, uh, interesting. I, Good. I felt I felt so 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 sorry and sad for the people that like we haven't seen our grandkids in two years and like right. like 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 uh, boasted about it. Right. Like, that's really sad. I'm really, I'm really sad for you. Right. Uh, you know, we, we, we still had birthday parties. We still had, uh, you know, uh, family gatherings. We still did the holidays. We still did, you know, throughout it. Uh, I got sick. I got sick for 28 days, December of, uh, of uh, 2000. Uh, it, it, COVID wasn't, it's not something that wasn't real. It's real. It was real. So you're saying in December of 2020, you yes. were sick. Okay. Yes. The whole month. Huh. Okay. Wow. So, uh, you know, we, we, we put off Christmas until New Year's Day. But we still did Christmas. Uh, but but I, I was sick. And like I said, COVID was real. There was a real thing. Right. It was, you know, I took the medication. I did what I was supposed to do. And, you know, I made it through. And, uh, you know, I had guys like Ken praying for me and all my other brothers and sisters. Right. Okay, let's, let's look at this. Let's say, uh, so uh, <clears throat> with the churches that went into lockdown or the religious mm -hmm. orders that went into lockdown um, that have never reopened, have you seen this in your area? And it's my understanding that not only did you not participate in the lockdown, but you had become a beacon sort of uh, for new parishioners and you brought in new parishioners sort of exponentially during this time, right? Exactly. So have these churches that shut down that didn't reopen, are there a lot of those? Are there, you know, 
you know what i don't i don't really know i mean i, I don't really keep you just you just hear a couple things i don't really keep account of them because i'm not you know that's their that's their problem uh i know that a lot of them have uh again lost you know um uh uh i guess attendance mm -hmm. uh and and a lot of them have went from you know four services to two or one or you know down down like that um and and again there there's there's a couple that i know that are still separated you know you can go in the gym if you you know don't feel comfortable coming into the sanctuary huh. and watch on tv and wear a mask huh still to this day yeah yeah uh, and when and when they did open again it was you know we are going to adhere to the 25 percent only 25%, you have to go online, make a reservation to come. I'm thinking to myself, there's gotta be something wrong with you pastors. Wow. And seriously, that was it, 25%, when it's done, it's done, you cut off, you can't come in. And yours did not do that. You welcomed everyone. We welcomed everyone, yeah. Like I said, we went from two to four and had to do overflows. Wow. Huh. Uh, now we're, and now we're in, um, we just purchased, we had to purchase a whole new building right. to try to gear up for what's happening because even though this thing seems to be over, the people that came to our church, they're not leaving. Exactly. Wow. So and that's, so, that's extraordinary, right? I mean, yes, it's almost as if they were led there by something, you know, I don't know. COVID to your church. <laughs> yes. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm going to just tell you this, it's the dynamic uh of the pastor of of the the elders in the church uh the the people that are there are are genuine um believers in the lord and 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 really want to um strive to do the lord's work mm -hmm. you know like i said our 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 uh, mission statement is you know to win souls for the lord disciple them and send them to win other souls and uh like i said we just we just started a new men's bible study uh, in a new book the movie book of john well we had a hundred guys show up on tuesday night and uh that's you know if you wanted to percentage wise about 30 38 percent of the men in the church wow which is extraordinary. Wow, that's amazing. And the women too. The women have a, a phenomenal. Uh, they're 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 100, 125 strong too on Thursday nights. So, huh? So when your church first decided to ignore the lockdown, did you have any negative experiences from either law enforcement, health officials, or? other people in your community or from other churches was there any pressure brought on you to close down i mean other than the, the rule the california rule that you have to close down yeah there was an enormous amount of pressure from other churches uh, not so much from law enforcement because like mike said we have uh, a real christian good sheriff and he's not enforcing anything so, um, but I know that Pastor Tim has been attacked by several other pastors, um, by media, by all kind of attacks from every direction. And so it, it's not an easy thing to be in a position that he's in because uh, the hatred that's out there, uh, the political anger, and um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that come with the territory, but what what blesses me and makes me want to support him even more is he doesn't cave into that pressure he he stands strong against it and and it's amazing really it's really amazing what he's been able to achieve under all that pressure and so for me i understand that to do what he's doing he has to be called by god and it has to be god himself that's enabling him to do it because I don't think any man could actually stand under that kind of pressure if, if, it, if God wasn't standing with him. Mm -hmm. And so I, uh, 
And that's why I, I, I feel like I'm a strong part of the church there. And I give 100% of support to the church and to the pastors and to the leadership there because um, th they need all the support that they can get because the attacks, they don't stop coming. They just keep coming. And like you that, that, for, Give me an example. Give me an example of the attacks. Well, and I don't even know most of them in detail, but I know uh, that like the social media stuff, the, the, the filthy comments, uh, the threats on the pastor's life, um, you know, all kind of stuff like that. And, and like this I said, came I'm not from the community. I'm sorry. What was that question? So these came from the community, from the community. Yes. From even other churches, uh, other, other, um, political uh, leaders on the opposite side. And uh, I mean, it's, it's real. And, you know, it's uh, like I said, I'm not in the inner circle of that, but we, we hear about it and uh -huh. we know it's there and I've seen it. I've seen some of it. And so it, it's real. And, um, but then again, you know, we, we trust God and God keeps enabling, God keeps protecting, God keeps bringing people that are strong in the faith that aren't going to compromise with these foolish governmental rules that are trying to be put on us to crush our freedom in the United States and to destroy our country. That's what they're doing. So let me, let me be the, hey, give me the, a, one the pop in there, Kelly, but with this yet yeah, there, there was one time when the police came on Sunday because of um, someone calling the police that we were open and we were not wearing masks. And they did come. And uh, I believe the police chief did apologize for that of Marietta. So uh, he apologized for coming to the church? For the, yeah, for an officer coming to our church. Oh, wow. Interesting. Uh, and uh, I think they were taking pictures of our license plates and things like that and doing all that stuff. So uh, the police were right. This is right off the bat, right in the beginning of the time, you know, when, when, uh, you know, they say that they told the churches to shut down uh, completely and not have any services. And we said, no. So, uh, but like I said, we, we are, our, our, our police chief, our city council, uh, our local police chief and city council, are, are very, very, you know, strong advocates for us. And, and again, we can go into the sheriff and the, the DA and all that stuff too. But uh, yeah, we, we, you know, there was, there was, you know, uh, uh, threats uh, to shut down and mm -hmm. threats coming from community and threats coming from even the governor, you know, uh, type offices. Really? I'm sure of that because of all the other churches that were open and getting threats. Huh. Uh, you know, they were fines. Yeah, they were fines. Yeah. You were fined. Your church was fined. Not, not us. The the other the uh, other counties that were uh, L.A. County uh, uh, up north in in uh, uh, in that huh. in some areas up there. Hmm. Yeah, there were churches that were doing exactly what we were doing, but because they were in a different political environment in right. other counties, they were getting all these fines and they were getting shut down by the government. And um, we were just waiting for that to come to us, but it never made it to us because we have, uh, you know, a sheriff that's not on board with them. Wow, lucky. I wonder, I wonder how different it would be if, if you had had the opposite. Uh, we would have been we would have been getting fined. We would have probably had chains on the door. We would have probably been all, all of us would have been in jail yeah. uh, because we would have just cut the chains off. No, seriously. And I mean, we would, got, I, we would have got arrested. Would that have happened? It would have happened. Yes. If they, if they chained up the door, um, I'm pretty sure a lot of us would have been thrown in jail. for trying to exercise our freedom of religion. Yes. And uh, you know, it, it was just, we were just in the right place at the right time to not have to go through some of the things that these other churches had gone through and were going through. And, uh, but we sat back and we supported them and we prayed for them 
And, and I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm so glad that we stayed open and we were there because there's so many broken families, so many families being crushed by losing their jobs mm -hmm. and by all the stuff that's happening. And they're coming to the church looking for, for help. And uh, imagine what that's like to come to a church looking for help and the doors are locked. Right. And, um, you know, and I'm so glad that I can say I wasn't part of that, that we were there, we're still there. Families are still hurting. The effects of COVID are still going on. Mm -hmm. People are still trying to recover from job loss, financial loss, sickness, all kind of stuff. And yet, you know, we have an army of, of, of strong uh, Christian people that honor Christ by loving others. And, and that's, I think that's what our church should be known for and not, you know, anything else because we're, we're, we're there not to um, be puffed up and say, look at us, we didn't bow down. No, we're there because we wanna honor God and we wanna be available for people and love people and, and resist this oppressive government that's being put into place because let them destroy and take away our freedoms it's going to continue and there'll be no way to stop it mm -hmm. okay so um i guess that kind of leads into my next question is if you're when your church stayed open um against the rules um you sort of came, became a place where people could go kind of a lifeline is is that fair to say these people that their church is closed Hey, but this place down the street is open and, you know, yeah. did you, you welcome them in, you helped them? Yes. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, I don't know. I mean, a, a lifeline. I mean, it was, it was more, like I said, in the beginning, it was more of a, uh, a, 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 a place to, to fellowship together, like-minded people. We're mm -hmm. like-minded people mm -hmm. want to worship God and, 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 you know, again, no one's going to tell us that we can't worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. No one's going to tell us that. And the government can't tell us that because, like you said, our First Amendment right gives us that right to do that. And uh, our forefathers, that's why they came to this country. Right. You know, for freedom of religion. Right. So uh, we're exercising that right, and that's what we did. <laughs> but the government would say, they would argue... Yes, but we have to ensure that you don't make other people sick. Right. Right. But again, but, but again, their actions were completely different than what they were saying. As far as, uh, okay, as far as, well, like you said, gambling places are allowed to go open. Mm -hmm. Big box stores, you're allowed to go open. You right. You have anybody you want in there. Uh, you, were, you were able to loot and riot. Uh huh. Um, but you can't go to church. You can't go to work. You can't go to a restaurant. Uh, and when they did open, you can go to a restaurant. You have to wear a mask to the table. But COVID knows don't go to the table because you can take your mask off at the table and talk to people. Right. But you have to wear it out of the restaurant. I mean, they, 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 well, you have to wear it five feet to get to the table. Yeah, take it yeah things didn't make sense. Right. Like I said, we have common sense. Mm -hmm. And it's the craziest thing you ever really, if you just think about it, they moved all the dining outside. And right. then outside, they put up tents with walls on it, which became outside indoors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's the most bizarre thing ever. But really what, what I think uh, became clear that the church was targeted when they said, uh, in California, no more singing. Yeah. I mean, that became like so obvious what their agenda was. And, uh, and, and to me, it became obvious that this is more than this is spiritual. This right. is, this is a spiritual force that's behind a political force that wants to stop the worship of God in our nation. Right. And don't replace what, whatever you do. That's don't what we it. refuse to do. We refuse to stop worshiping our God over political oppression so it was unbelievable actually when you think about it um if lockdowns should occur again um well i let wait i'm ahead of myself so so i'm curious how many of your parishioners 
who continued to attend your services actually got the COVID and did any die? Um, I don't think any of our um, parishioners, as you call them, um, got COVID and died. I think eventually everyone got the COVID virus. I personally had it, lasted about three days. Um, it, was, it was very minor for me and for my family. Um, I know Mike had it for almost a month, but in most cases that I'm aware of, not even a not even a bad flu type of thing huh and so um so you got it later you got it not like i, I got it i got it uh probably before it was <coughs> announced i had it and it was mild uh in the it, even before like uh it first came out maybe like two weeks before and then um uh, i got it again um maybe like the second uh, variant that went around and it was still it was even milder Huh. And so, um, and I'm saying I got it. I never got tested. So I don't know for sure that that's even what it was. But uh, if it was that, to me, it wasn't. And I'm, and I'm not uh, downplaying it. I know there are people that, you know, got it really bad. And there are people that died. And there may be a few people in our church that uh, got it and lost uh, loved ones to it. And, uh, but the number, the number is small. And uh, in most of the cases, there were other other uh, medical problems mm -hmm. uh, that these people had and stuff. And so, and, and then, you know, we started finding out some of the drugs that the hospitals were given and these drugs were actually the cause of death instead of the virus itself. And so there, there's a lot more to the story that can't be confirmed because the hospital doors are locked. You can't go in, you can't visit your loved ones when they're in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a very sickening thing Thing that has been done and is, um, is that still in place is that still in place where you can't go in to hospitals in california i think there are some some hospitals yeah, still, hospitals. still do. Now, down, down here in riverside county yes you the, you can you can go your your spouse or you know immediate family member can go in but you have to be tested for covid you know you have to have a a, mm -hmm. a covid test uh, prior to going in there. So, so again, that costs you a hundred bucks to go get that done. So you can walk in. I mean, it's just a, it's a moneymaker thing. You know, uh, how interesting, how interesting, because uh, as I said, I've had a, this, I've had a sinus infection for about three weeks. I've been to the doctor twice. Okay. Right. And I found it interesting that they didn't ask me if I had COVID, they didn't ask me if I had been vaccinated and they didn't ask me if I wanted a COVID test. And I thought, isn't that interesting? After two years of, you know, this yeah. onslaught, this fear, now <laughs> we don't even want to know. We I, don't I, work, I, work know. School, I work for a school district and I have to be tested every single week still. Okay. <laughs> it's weird, right? It's very random rules now. It's yes. very hit or miss. It's hit or miss, yeah. I mean, and again, it's a fear factor. I think people are still in fear. And there's, and there's still people, even though now it seems to be somewhat over, there's still people, though, that will not take off their mask. They won't talk to you. They stay away from you. They keep their distance. They're still there. They're still driving in their cars with their mask on, you know, and um, they uh, have so much fear that they just will not let it go. They won't let well, it that's go. a good question. Have you, have, you, have, have you lost any friends or family over this by the because of your stand? I mean. I have, I've lost some friends over it. Um, fortunately for me, most of my family is conservative and uh, we lean pretty much all in the same direction. So I don't have a big family division and separation, but I know that's a reality. I know there's major separation of families that disagree over political stuff, over the COVID stuff. And it's so divisive and it is so destructive. And that's why it's important that our church stay open because people are coming and they have uh, these um, battles within their families and they're looking for answers and they're looking for help and they're looking for prayer. And, and um, it, it's a good thing that the church remained open because yeah. I think the devastating effects of a COVID would be a lot worse if there weren't some faithful pastors and churches that stayed open. 
Yeah, and and we're talking about destructive things, not just the COVID, but what's happened to people. I mean, right. there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of depression. I mean, it's what you hear now today is the whole mental health effect um, of being shut up for and locked up for two years, right? Right. Especially I, kids. I have a personal friend. I have one personal friend, a lady, a younger lady. She got COVID and she's got what they call long-term COVID that's causing like psychosis stuff. Wow. And she gets depression. She gets uh, psychotic at times. And uh, then she goes back to the doctor and they put her on another drug and another drug. And one thing leads to another. And this was a young lady that was totally healthy. Wow. And, and never got the vaccine, but caught the virus. And, um, you know, it had a different effect. And, wow. uh, and she's like one of a small, in a small number, but it does happen. Um, so that's, that, that's a good question. Let me, How let many, me tell you a story. Uh, let me back up when you said, did we lose any friends or whatever? Let me tell you a story about uh, back in, I think, 1978, uh, Jim and I were uh, uh, roommates and uh, your good friend, Jim, and uh, Vita, uh, we're roommates. And uh, and we started a, a game, a card game at our house called World Series of Poker. And for, and, and it was on Thanksgiving weekend and guys that we grew up with, what the high school with, grammar school with, we all got together, 30 guys strong and play this card game every single year. Mm -hmm. This year was the, what, 40th year, 45th year, whatever it was. Uh, they, they didn't do it last year because of the COVID. And uh, so this year they did it. And I was at a uh, friend's daughter's funeral and a couple of our friends were there. And um, he turned to me and said, uh, we're having the card game, but you can't come because you're not vaccinated. You have to be vaccinated. So Jim and I were not allowed to come to the card game that we basically started 40 plus years ago because we were not vaccinated. How sad, how sad. How sad, how sad. I mean, it was kind of like, well, okay, you know, you were all vaccinated, then we, we, didn't, we didn't want to get the, uh, uh, the, the, the COVID shedding from your shot. Thank you, you know, <laughs> you were exactly. more protecting us. <laughs> exactly, you know, actually my, Jim did tell me that story and I was like, wow, I was blown away when he told it to me. Um, Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it was. It's quite sad. The, the. Uh, I mean, we're talking fifty-five-year-old friends. Yeah, right. Fifty-five-year-old friendships gone. Yeah, interesting. Well, okay. So here, let's let's look at it this way. So, if lockdowns occur again in the future, say in the fall for you know the new influenza. Um, have religious organizations, and I mean in total, including yours, okay, um, taken any steps uh, uh, to anticipate the lockdown, the possible lockdown? And, you know, as a community of religious entities, are there any preemptive actions that are being formulated to sort of nip a lockdown in the bud? You know, something along the lines of some kind of universal statement because, look, I know a lot of churches got a lot of money to stay closed. I, I, I've read all the reports, okay, you know, literally billions of dollars. Uh, so what's going to happen the next time? Has anybody thought ahead to go, look, we need to figure this out? Yeah, I think we have. We just bought a bigger building. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, and, and, and not only that, but um, we are uh, actively our pastor and our church is actively involved in trying to get the right people elected and put in office so that we, um, you know, don't have this kind of oppression right. from the government that we have uh, political people that will stand with us instead of being opposed to us. And mm -hmm. so that's one thing that uh, Pastor Tim Thompson is uh, adamant about. He's pursuing it with everything he's got. And um, I, I think it could make a difference. Well, I mean, I think I, 
In fact, uh, your your uh, your church has a uh, religious exemption form, which I thought was fabulous. And what I thought was great about it, it's all based in the Bible. I mean, yeah. this is not lawyers putting this together. This is this is the Bible saying, you know, no, I don't have to have the vaccine. Okay, so I thought that was very interesting. In fact, you can go to their website, uh, uh, four twelve Church Marietta. And, uh, and take a look at it. Um, but again, I mean, is your pastor working with other pastors to, to kind of get ahead of the game? You know it's coming again. You know it, right? You know it. <laughs> I, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that he has, you know, again, the, the, you know, the, the, the pastors that are stayed open, I'm sure that, that you know, he's, he's in contact with them. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, you, you you know if 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 there's a uh, a behind the scene thing that they're saying okay this is what's going to happen if this is going to happen mm -hmm. I I think more and more people are going to say no to it uh, because of the uh, the outcome of what has happened before and and the inconsistencies of the Fauci's and the people that were uh, were were telling us a lot of stuff mm -hmm. but, but we're finding out now that a lot of what they're saying did not come to fruition or they, the numbers were skewed or right. you know, down the line there. Uh, you know, 57 more thousand people died in 2000 than they did in 2019. And there are other treatments that work and- That worked, that, that didn't work. I mean, the last time I, the last time I had COVID the second time, I had the, the, the Omicron, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. um, and when I started feeling bad, I started feeling the flu symptoms. Uh, I took the ivermectin and the hydroxychloroquine and three days it was gone. Wow. So, so you know, it, it coincidence? Don't know. Uh, right. uh, because I have the antibodies. You know, I mean, I heard Dr. Fauci say, if you, if you have the flu, you got the antibodies. You don't need a shot. Right. He did say that. Yes. <laughs> So I mean, I have the I had I had the the, the 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 COVID twice. I got the antibodies. I don't need a shot, uh, right? You know, and, uh, you know, but but if you want to get into the shot, I mean, it's not or the vaccine. It's really not a vaccine. So I mean, it's you know, they're, they're, right. you have to you have to look at exactly what that is. Right, and, and again, I mean, in, you know, in my case, it was basically as soon as they said experimental, I was out. <laughs> you know, um, you don't know the effects. I just had a, a friend of mine tell me that his his wife got the vaccine. She works, and and they told her that she has to have the vaccine. She got the vaccine and didn't tell the family. Okay, and all of a sudden now, a year later, she started having a lot of physical uh, problems, and she finally had to tell them, and. Um, that she got the vaccine and things are starting to happen to her. Huh? And she's a young hmm. lady. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, a lot is let to, yet to be seen, uh, given that it is experimental. We have, a, we have quite a while to find out what's going on with this. So we're getting to the end here. I want to do uh, one more question. So um, do you have any words of wisdom, I guess, um, for religious energy, entities um, who sort of caved to the lockdowns and would you say to those who closed their doors, you know, did they do a disservice to their parishioners when they refused to stand up to the mandates? I mean, who were they serving? Who were they serving when they did that? I don't think they were serving God. Um, I think they were serving themselves. Uh, I don't believe that they were um, in the best interest for their community. Uh, like I said, a couple of weeks, okay, we closed down for two weeks. But after that, or, or I wasn't there, but 412 Church closed down for a couple of weeks and then said, no, we're opening. Um, uh, it, it was a disservice to the, to, to their, uh, to the parishioners, to the family of God. Um, you know that's 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 my opinion and and what would you tell them what would you tell them next time when it happens the next time stay open 
Stay no open, matter what. Stay open and be strong in the Lord and let the Lord guide you, not the government. That, what do you that, say, Ken? And I'm not sure it's going to happen again. I think their attempt to, you know, if you look at, they, they found out that the shutdowns didn't really work. It didn't achieve what they wanted. They wanted to crush the economy of the United States. And, and here we are, it, it brought us pretty far down, but now we're just a little bit beyond it. And the, the economy of the United States is just exploding right now. It's thriving. So it's kind of had a reverse effect. And if they use it to try to destroy the economy, it, it failed. It, it, it wouldn't make sense to do it again. Now they may do something even bigger. That's a possibility. But I think um, for me, I, I, I would tell uh, the parishioners, the pastors that they um, you know, need to trust God, trust God, live for Christ, not to be afraid because we don't have to fear those who can destroy our bodies. We trust God. And we know that if we do die to live as Christ, to die is gain. And so because I've given my life to Jesus Christ, I'm not really afraid. I don't have to fear death. I know where I'm going when I die. The Bible makes it clear. And for me, um, I'm, I'm going to give that message to as many people as I can. I'm going to tell them not to bow down. Don't give in to tyranny. Don't give in to oppression. Don't uh, give in to an oppressive government. To trust God. Do what's right. And I think as long as we have that heart to do what's right and live for God and, and honor God, then God's going to be on our side. That's what the Bible says. And if God's on our side, if he's for us, then who can be against us? And so we don't have to walk in fear. Okay, that's great. I love it. Hey, Mike, Ken, thank you so much. I love this show. I'm so thank glad you, we Kelly. had this discussion. And thank you for remaining true to your religious beliefs and uh, staying open. And uh, let's hope it doesn't happen again. I, I, I don't want that to happen, but uh, stay strong. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank God bless you, Kelly. Thank, Thank you. you.